Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. This is AutoLine Daily for December 3rd, 2010, and now the news. Well, they're at it again. The U.S. Transportation Department is coming up with more regulations. It wants to mandate the use of backup cameras in all vehicles by 2014. About 300 people are killed every year in the U.S. in backovers, and about 18,000 are injured. Backup cameras are becoming more common, but they're only on 20% of vehicles today, the AP reports. You know, my bet is we're going to see an explosion of those rear view mirrors that have a backup camera built into them. You can already get aftermarket versions of them for under $100. And for automakers, they're a whole lot cheaper than installing a video screen like they use on nav systems. Say, did General Motors deliberately overproduce vehicles leading up to the IPO to make its financial numbers look better? That's what some people are saying. Cadillac has a 99-day supply of unsold vehicles in the field. Buick has 85 days. Chevy has 71. Remember, as soon as a car rolls off the assembly line, an automaker books it as a sale. So the more you build, the better your financial numbers look. But on last night's Auto Line After Hours, Michael Robinett, an analyst with IHS Automotive, said, be careful. Don't read too much into that yet. He points out that GM did not have its traditional summer shutdown. They just kept on building cars. But GM probably will shut down over the Christmas holidays, which could help bring those inventory numbers down. However, if we get deep into January and GM still has sky-high inventory levels, then the conspiracy theorists are right. GM did goose production to make the financial numbers look better going into the IPO. To promote its electric vehicle, the C0, Citroen created a car sharing service called Citroen Business Connected. It's for companies and local governments that want to get EVs into their fleets. In addition to allowing employees access to the cars, the service will provide support for the setup of a charging infrastructure and monitor the battery charge remotely to ensure it's properly charged for the next person to use. Remember, the C0 is really just a Mitsubishi IMEV with a different name. Of course, Mitsubishi just changed the name of the IMEV to the I. And ay 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 how are we supposed to keep up with all these names? Over in China, GM just grabbed the top rankings in JD Power's appeal survey. That survey looked at 82 attributes in 10 vehicle categories with evaluations from more than 14,600 new car owners across China. The Chevy New Sail finished first in the premium compact segment. The Chevy Spark took top honors in the compact segment. And the Rong Guang, a vehicle made with Wuling, came out on top in the minivan segment. Say, is the Rong Guang the opposite of the right Guang? Ay, 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 these car names. A couple of days ago, we reported that Rolls Royce was charging astronomical prices for its cars in China. That's not to say they're reasonable anywhere else in the world, but nearly a million bucks for a Phantom seems a little rich. In related news, Bloomberg reports China is now Lexus's most profitable market, eclipsing the U.S. as Toyota's luxury cash cow. But with the prices they're charging, it's not hard to see why. In China, the LS600 hybrid has a base price of 2 million yuan. That's about $310,000. In the U.S., that same car costs 110000 You don't need me to tell you that's a big difference. Lexus sells a little over 200,000 vehicles in the U.S. and will probably sell maybe 45,000 in China. And maybe those Chinese will buy more of those Lexus LS600 hybrids. Last month, Lexus only sold 13 of them in the U.S. With all the industry talk of EVs and fuel economy, finally, here's some good news for enthusiasts. According to the Detroit Free Press, Chevy is reviving the high-performance Z28 Camaro. Nothing has been officially announced yet, 
but the car is expected to feature a supercharged 6.2 liter V8 delivering anywhere between 500 and 600 horsepower. Look for that car to go on sale sometime in the 2012 model year. Coming up next, a look at a supercar built in Michigan, but it's not from GM or Ford or Chrysler. We'll be back right after this. Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone run-flat tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. So what do you get when you want to create an advanced high-powered supercar and money is no object? Well, you get the 2012 iconic AC Roadster. As you might guess from the name, the famous British company AC Cars was involved in developing the Roadster along with Iconic Motors, a small company just outside of Detroit. Seamus McElroy filed this report. While it may look like an old AC Cobra, I can assure you the 2012 Iconic AC Roadster doesn't have anything in common with the original. Underneath the hood is a massive 427 cubic inch naturally aspirated 6.8 liter all aluminum V8 push rod engine that cranks out, get this, 825 horsepower to go along with 680 foot pound of torque. It's mated to a custom six speed manual transmission. And speaking of custom parts, just about every piece on this car was fabricated by Iconic itself. This is no kit car. Thanks to that powerful engine and the light weight of the Roadster, it only weighs about 2,400 pounds. Zero to 60 miles per hour can be achieved in under three seconds. While those power numbers are real impressive, the car also features new technology called VDIMS, which is a unique way to move power and data with a single cable through the use of hardware and software. Ethernet is used to transmit the data. Because of this, a lot of the wiring in a car can be tossed out, but there are other benefits as well. well we have uh, lower install cost, uh, higher reliability. Uh, you have uh, less inventory to carry as a manufacturer because all of the cabling is standardized. Uh, one or two different sizes of connectors will do the entire installation. Uh, we also have the capability of using the internet tools that Ethernet uh, enables you to use, like being able to do diagnostics with your laptop with a standard web browser like Internet Explorer or Firefox, rather than having to purchase a $10,000 ODB2 uh, test stand, which will only give you certain information that a traditional auto manufacturer would allow you to have. Thanks for that report, Seamus. VDIMs can be used for other non-automotive applications as well. And Iconic plans to build 100 AC Roadsters right here in Michigan. But all that power and technology doesn't come cheap. The company plans to charge $475,000 for the car. Hey, maybe they ought to sell it in China and tack another million onto that price. Anyway, that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We will see you on Monday.